Good evening, everyone. It's time again for Java, and uh, tonight we're going to be doing Chapter 3. Um, just running through the uh, basics of what the chapter is about, and all the exercises slash, um, what are they, listings inside. So, uh, so, so uh, yeah, remember this decision. Yes. Done. All right. So, uh, I've got my digital copy version popped up over here. Let me get down to Chapter 3. Oh, gosh. Uh, ch chapter three, chapter three. Uh, wish they had, oh, hyperlinks. There we go. All right, so this section is going to be covering um, declare boolean, boolean values, the if statements, guess birth dates, stuff like that. So the first listing that I am seeing, on if I can get my toolbar to pop back up here. There we go. Uh, the first listing is 3.1, uh, listing 2.2. Uh, it's going to be lines 12 through 17, listing 2.2. Nope, that's not what we want. There's a table. Okay, so let's run through the basics. You're going to have an if statement. All right, so new class. Uh, we're just going to call this um, examples. All right. So here are your basic examples of um, what an if statement is. If, in some quotes, do something. Else, uh, else if, some quotes, do something. And I don't think we need an end because it's all going to be inside the little squiggly brackets like this. And then the last one's an else, uh, which doesn't require regular brackets. So this is the basic rundown of what it is. And this command, these commands, uh, except this command, it's looking for a Boolean value. It's looking for a zero or a one, a true or false out of this. And inside these, we can basically have anything we want. So like x is equal to 10, oh, sorry, double equals. Uh, x is greater than or equal to 100. And then else would be anything else and take a default. Oops, got an extra squiggly in there. All right, so it doesn't matter what the statement is on the inside here, as long as it's returning a true false value. Uh, you can't return something like a. So if a, that's technically, if you want to get into characters and strings, that is not a zero, so that is a true statement, so it's above zero, but what they're looking for is a, a zero or a one, a boolean value, so. Okay, um, our basics of what you can have for conditional statements are greater than, greater than, oops, greater than or equal to or sorry, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, uh, greater than, sorry, I missed that one up there, blink, like that, not equal to, is equal to, and I think that's it. Yeah, that's all they got listed, so that's all I'll say. Um, where it's going to compare the value on the left with the value on the right. All right, and something to keep in mind, this right here, the greater than, less than, always remember... LTE, GTE. This is how I keep them in mind because Cold Fusion uses a different version of this. LTE, GTE. You always have to have the less than or greater than before the equals to because later on you're going to learn that this is a different command. All right, let's go to our first listing. Looks like it's going to be listing 3.1 addition quiz dot Java so uh, yeah let's just brand new one new class addition quiz dot Java oh I don't need the dot Java just addition quiz there we go uh, looking at the top see if they have any kind of imports and they do import java dot util dot scanner 
Oh, it didn't auto complete. What the? Java.util. Scanner. There we go. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oops. And like always, public static void main strings. Nope, just string args. Uh, by the way, you are going to have to forgive me because I am a bit rusty on my Java. It has been a while since my last video. Uh, we're going to put an int number equals and we're going to cast int onto system.current time millis, which is milliseconds, space modulus 10. This says we just want the remainder. That's what modulus is. This right here a lot of people are like, oh, that just, that gives you the uh, the rounded, no, this is the point value that gets returned um, when you divide something by something. So divided by 10, what's the remainder of the current time in milliseconds divided by 10? Give us the, uh, the remainder only. We don't want the rest. Uh, the second one is going to be int number two equals casting of int. What did I forget? I forgot something. Did I forget something? No, I didn't. Okay, cool. System dot current time millis divided by seven modulus ten. And semicolon at the end. Oops. Wrong spot. There we go. Uh, they got a comment in here. Create a scanner. Scanner input equals new scanner system.in. So that's going to be our new scanner that we called from the utilities up above. And oh, what did I do there? Oh, system dot in. Okay. Uh, next line, line 11. Ooh, I don't have my lines listed. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll, I'll figure that out later. Line 11 in your book. It's going to be system.out.print. And we're going to say, uh, by the way, this shows your, uh, on line 12, it pushes it down. You don't have to do that. We have enough lineage. Oh, excuse me. We have enough lineage that we can go all the way across for like 65,000 characters. So we, we got a lot of places, a lot of space to play with. Um, your book does it to fit it all on the page. Um, what what is space plus number one plus quote plus quote plus number two plus quote question mark? Okay, so to show you what this is doing, it's taking a string and then it says. Uh, put these this string together with our number that we declared earlier, and then do uh, concatenate it again with a plus symbol, which is actually a string. So when it prints out, it's going to be this plus this, and question mark, all that good stuff right there. Oh, that's that's not the point of what we're doing this for. Um, then we're going to do int answer equals input dot next int. So it's going to ask you for the next question. Or it's going to ask you for the number. And then we are going to check that. System.out.println print line number one plus quote plus quote plus number two plus quote equals uh, if you don't know which book I'm working out of, um, please go watch the first video. I hold it up and, and explain which book we're actually using. It has, also has the ISBN number, so you can look it up at your local library, or you can um, download a copy of the PDF if you happen to find a free version of it. No, this is not a free version that I've got. No, I cannot pr provide you with one. Uh, then we do plus is plus... Ooh, that's not checking for anything. Okay, then in quotes, it's going to be number one plus number two. Sorry, that's a variable, so there's no space in there. 
and then equals answer. Okay, so what this is doing, this is this is going to spit out onto our screen the first number plus the second number equals our answer, and then it's going to tell us is true or is false. So, uh, there we go. What is 7 plus 3? 7, 8, 9, 10. So, 7 plus 3 equals 10 is true. Cool. Oh, and the shortcut key I used was Control F11. So we're going to do it again. Uh, 9 plus 5, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I'm going to put in 15. 9 plus 5 is uh, equal to 15 is false. So what this is doing is just showing you how to return a Boolean value of what this is evaluating. So like in our if statement, we could say if number 1 plus number 2 is equal to this, then true, uh, if not, false. Okay. Uh, and it gives a couple of examples of the listing. Oh, 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 oh. come on. Section 3, 1, 3, 2. Come on, let's find the listings. Where are the listings? Ah, that's better. Okay. Uh, listing 3, 2, 3, 3. The if statement, 3, 4. Uh, it does show you um, uh, a table, um, a pseudo, pseudo graph, I guess it's called. So you could follow that along. Uh, a lot of your pseudo graphs, when you have a true false statement, a yes, no statement, it's going to be in the uh, diamond shape for your um, pseudo graph. If statement executes, OK. Here we go. The next listing is going to be simple if demo.java. So come up here, right click. We're going to do new class. This is going to be simple if demo. Like always, we're going to do an import. Import. Uh, Java.util.scanner. Why is it doing that? Dot scanner. There we go. Uh, pu pub public static void main to start us off string array args all right and we're set up uh, on line five it creates a scanner on line six it does an output and says enter a integer on line seven, it does int number equals input dot next int. So it gets the first int. If number modulus five is equal to zero, um, then it spits out high five. High five. Uh, if it's modulus high, is equal to two, it says high even. All right, let's go. Uh, I'm about to sneeze. I'm, go I'm going to sneeze. Maybe not. Okay, cool. Scanner input equals new scanner system dot in. And then system dot out dot print print ln. Enter an integer. Oops, forgot semicolon. Don't forget your semicolons int number equals input dot next int and then we spit out if oh no uh yep yeah. here we go if number modulus five is equal to zero so if the remainder of this number divided by five is equal to zero then System, oh, I got to put an at capital is system dot out dot print ln high five. Oh, 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 they're not showing you curly brackets yet. So 
Um, when you just have a single statement after an if statement, you don't need the brackets. If number modulus modulus to modulus is um, the fancy name for percentage sign, then system dot out dot print ln high even. Save that, run that, enter an integer, and I'm going to say 10. It's a high five and a high even. Uh, control F11 again. We're going to run it a second time. We're going to say 13. It is neither. Control F5, or not F5. Control F11. We're going to do the number 5. It's a high 5. So right off the bat, I found one that had both. The modulus of 10 uh, by 5 is 0, and 10 modulus 2 is 0. It's an even number, and it's divisible by 5. Um, let's see, another number that can do that, I think, is 100 and 1,000. That's just because I'm going up by integers of 10. Um, 20, I don't believe. Yeah, it is. Uh, 25, however, is not. It's just a high five. 30 is both. There we go. So that is listing 3.2, simple if demo. Uh, next, it goes into a case study guessing the birth dates. Uh, 1, 2, 16, okay. Uh, and we do the guess birth date dot Java. Sweet. So let's go ahead and start up a new class. We're going to call it guess birthday dot Java. Oh, we don't need the dot Java because it's going to put it on there for us. This looks like a really large listing. Hold on a second. Let's see how many lines this is. 87 lines of code. So this is going to be pretty big. All right. Let's get started. First things first, we have to import java.util.scan. It did it again. Dot scanner. I was trying to do an update earlier for this thing, and it's just not working right. So public static void main string args remember me saying that you're going to have to type this like over and over and over again that's because that is a very important string right there uh, very important function uh, first thing we're going to do string set one equals all right. Uh, keep an eye on line six and all, all the ones that have the dates on them. Notice how one has a space in front of it. That's because when you get into double digits, there's going to be a like a, a number one 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 two one three. So there's space one. Uh, it looks like double space three, double space five, double space seven slash n, which means new line. Oh, I see what they did there. Okay, so they didn't put a semicolon. They did this. There we go. That way it looks like space 9, uh, 11, 13, 15, slash n. There we go. Okay. I get what they're doing. So I'm going to speed up the video. Um, we're going to finish out these lines. Uh, it's going to be set one, set two, set three, set four, uh, and I think set five. But uh, I'll, I will type them out. Uh, enjoy the speed lapse.
Okay, so you should have your sets typed out. Uh, let's go into the next part down on line 37. It's going to be create a scanner. Basically, we need an input of some type. Scanner input equals new scanner. Ooh, scanner system dot in. No, not system dot in. System dot in. Capital I? No, it's not capital I. They really got to fix the lexer on here. This is horrible. Or not the lexer, the um, corrective type. Uh, prompt. Wow. I need to correct my spelling. Prompt the user to answer questions. System.out.print is your birthday in set one question mark slash n and we're going to system dot out dot print set one so this is taking that value that we set up there oops system dot out dot print dot set one uh, system dot out dot print slash in so new line enter zero for no and one for yes and that's because we don't know the difference between yeses and nos but we will soon system dot out oh no sorry uh, int dot answer equals Input dot next int. Ooh, what happened there? Oh, int declaration, not input. All right, uh, and then we have if answer equals one, then day plus equals one, semicolon. All right, let me scroll down a little bit and get to our next one. Uh, and we're basically going to do we're, we're going to do the same thing for sets uh, two, three, four, and five. So this is where we can do some copying and pasting as long as we got the first one right here. Day, 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 one, two, four, eight, sixteen. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, I see what they're doing with the different sets. That's funny. Okay. Okay, so from this line up to here, copy, paste, enter, paste, enter, paste, enter, paste, enter, paste. So that should be five sets. Uh, and we go, is it in set one? Is it in set two? And the only difference is we're going to do uh, add two. Is it in set three? We're going to add four, which is binary counting. One, two, four, eight, sixteen. Uh, is it in set one? What were we on? Three, set four. If it is, we're going to add eight. Is it in set 5? If it is, we're going to add 16. So then we're going to print out uh, your birthday is and the day. So at the very end here, system.out.println slash in your birthday is plus day plus quote exclamation mark cool save it run it uh oh there's an error where it was the error uh, Eric is sticking no we don't want to proceed we want to correct our error answer why is that int answer equals input text oh it's because we did that 
Okay, so we don't have to declare it down here. Take that out. Delete. Why is it giving us that? All right, go back up to our first initial. Ah. Okay, right before we create the scanner, we have to initia uh, initialize day. Int day equals zero. There we go. That should take care of the day being initialized. And we have to take out the additional initializations here. Because you can't initialize something that's already been initialized. There we go. Save that, run that. Uh-oh, still have errors. What did we misspell? Answer equals input text, answer equals input text, answer equals input text. Well, what's wrong with that? What? Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and proceed. Compilation problem, syntax error. Ah, I missed a semicolon somewhere. Where did I miss it? Where did I miss it? Uh, line 16. Ah, right there. In set two, I missed a semicolon. Save that, run that. Okay, uh, my birthday is on the 8th, so um, let's see, the first set, it's not there, so zero, oh, oh, we don't want it there, come down here, zero, enter, uh, not there, uh, not there, nope. Your birthday is zero. Well, what happened? Hold on. In set one, set two. <laughs> so I was printing out the first set every single time. Silly. Set two, set three, set four. So there was no syntax there. It did exactly what I told it to, which was wrong. There we go. Save that. Run that. Here we go. All right. Zero. Uh, nope, zero. Not in that one. Yes, in that one. Not in that one. Your birthday is the eighth. Nice. And we know why that happened. I hope. Uh, if you don't, it is an old school magic trick from like the 20s and 40s. So um, magicians actually used to do that trick. Uh, okay, so that was listing. What listing was that? Listing three two. No, that was listing three three. Uh, we're gonna keep scrolling down, scroll down, 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 down. Let's get to our next listing. Listing, listing, listing. Figure three two three five. Still in chapter three. It says Boolean expressions. This goes into radius greater than or equal to zero than false. Uh, writing the if then statement. Nested ifs in multiple ways. All right, I love nested ifs. And they've got a great example on page 92 where they've got a pseudocode if, 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 uh, four times. Well, uh, one, two, three, four, five, with five different answers. Come on, where's our listing? they got to have a listing for that one, right? What? Generating random numbers. No, I want a multiple listing. I, well, I guess you guys don't really need one. Okay. If I missed a listing, I do apologize. We're just going to skip on down. The next one, it's going to go into generating random numbers. Uh, you can use math.random to obtain a random double value between 0 and 1, uh, excluding 1.0. Uh, suppose you develop a program for a first grader to practice subtraction. All right, and then it goes into listing 3.4, subtraction quiz. So, here we go. Right-click, new, 
see. Subtraction quiz. We don't need Java. Looks like we're going to import java.util.scanner. Oh, that's one of my biggest pet peeves is when it doesn't autocomplete for me. Uh, public static void main string args. And we're all set up. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and do the comments first. One generate two random single single digit integers uh, and then two if number oh let's use lowercase if number one is less than number two swap number one with number two and that's just so it keeps it easy for um, little kids. This uh, this is like a an idea for um, a little kid to come in and practice his math. He's not going to be dealing with negative numbers. So one minus three, he'd go, oh no, I've got zero left, and get confused. So we want to swap those all the time. The highest number minus the lowest number, uh, which we won't get into max mins yet, or ceiling floor, but that is coming. Uh, the third is prompt the student to answer what is number one minus number two? Question mark, quote. And four, grade the answer and display the result. So we have all of our comments in there, which is, this is how you should start off your code. Map out what you're going to do first, and then go in and actually program it. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, by the way, you should also do, if you're getting into big scale programs, you should always do a, a pseudo code first. Um, get an idea of what you're going to need from the user, from resources, databases, stuff like that. Once you get up into higher level programming of Java, it gets really confusing really fast because you're going to get thousands of lines of code. Uh, da, 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 da. Not to be discouraging because it's fun. I think uh, debugging is one of my favorite things to do. Hunting for the code. Math.random. There's that random. Times 10. All right, so what this is doing, this is going to return that 0 to 1 value anywhere in that range and then times it by 10. So it's, it's basically it's going to move that digit over. Um, uh, very common use of random right here. Uh, copy paste that because we're just going to rename the value itself or the variable. Uh, and then, okay, that's it for that. If number... 2 is less than number, sorry, if number 1 is less than number 2, then int temp equals number 2, oh, sorry, number 1, uh, number 1 equals number 2, and then number 2 equals temp. So that's how you swap them around. You create a temporary variable, place, uh, drop the value of number 1 in there, and then assign the value of number two to number one, and then take that temporary and put it back on number two. That way you can always have the biggest number as the first number. Uh, make sure I got my semicolons in there, good. Uh, number three, system.out.print. And just to show you that the, the line doesn't really matter, like that, we can do this. What is, quote, plus number one, plus minus, wow, plus number two. Oh, man, I missed the one on that one, didn't I? And then just a question mark, right? What is number one minus number two? 
plus, and then just a question mark. Uh, looks like they've got a space after it. So, we'll, yeah, we'll put a space in there. Uh, and then scanner input equals new scanner system dot in. Wow, I'm going to put a space on that because that space that I'd used, yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Uh, get up there. There we go. Now I don't feel so bad about putting that right next to it. Uh, so we initialize, initialize our new input scanner, and we do int answer equals input dot next int. And after the user has, come on, after the user has put something in, we should be able to evaluate it and tell it if it's true or false. If number one minus number two is equal to answer. That means that is the correct one. Ooh. If number one minus number two is equal to answer, this should return a true or false. Then, oh my gosh, they don't even have brackets on this one. All right, so ignore the curly brackets for the if then statements for now. I don't know why they do that. Horrible practice, always put everything in brackets, period. You don't need it, but you should. System.out.println. You are correct. Else, system.out.println. You are wrong. Wow, that's kind of harsh. Uh, I don't like that. Let's do this. Um, not right. It's a nicer way to talk to a little kid who's trying to practice this math. You're wrong. It's horrible. Plus, all right, so the slash n does new line, number one, plus, quote, plus, plus. And basically, we're just typing out what it actually is. Number Oh, sorry, that's a minus. Number one, minus number two, plus is, and then plus number one, minus number two. Just like that. And that should be ready to go. Uh-oh, it says I have an error in there somewhere. There we go, number two. All right, save that, run that, here we go. What is eight minus one? It's gonna be seven. You are correct. Yay, four minus two is two. Correct, yay. Nine minus two is eight. Um, not right. Nine minus two is seven. Perfect, okay. That's it for the listing three, four. Uh, da -da 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 -da. By the way, um, we can put a loop in here. Uh, so like if you actually wanted to make this an actual program for somebody, um, we could put a, do you want to continue? Do you want to continue? Do you want to continue? Or uh, eventually you could put uh, enter negative one to exit the game or something like that, or enter Q to quit. So, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to show you the loop yet. Let's go ahead and check out the more listings. Uh, it's got 8.9 case study, computing body mass index. Uh, listing 3.5, compute and in, compute and interpret BMI. Uh, it's only got about 35 lines. It looks like I'm I'm pushing the edge of time here. So. Let's go ahead and do listing three five. Oops, 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 oops. Right click. New class. Here we go. Compute. Ooh. And interpret BMI. Ugh. Oh. 
All right, where's our last one subtraction quiz? Let's just do this. Control home. I'm going to take the scanner because we're going to use the scanner. Paste in the scanner. We're going to use the int main public static void. There we go. That makes it quicker. All right. Uh, first things first is scanner input equals new scanner system dot in. Not system set. Why do you keep doing that? System dot in. Whew. It's rough. So rough. Um, da -da -da -da. Oh, I don't need those on there. Uh, and then we're going to go in our comments. Prompt the user to enter weight in pounds. System dot out dot print. We're just asking the user enter weight in pounds, which is a string. Uh, notice how we don't have a new line here. That's because we want them to enter the value on this line. And then double weight. There's something that we haven't used much. Uh, doubles. Input dot next double. Uh, prompt the user to enter a height in inches, which is basically the same thing. Wow. Why did that move? What are you doing? Stop it. All right. Give me this. I'm tired of this misspelling in here. H E I G H T. High in inches. Enter H E I G H T. Enter height in pounds. <laughs> I'm 24 pounds high. No. <laughs> inches. H E I G H T. Next double. And then. Final, double. Oh, here's something that you don't see often. Final. Uh, this is basically creating constants. Uh, as in, you will not change this. This is a constant for this program. Uh, it will remain a constant until the program is terminated. And becomes a constant again once it's back in. 0.4535927. Constant. We don't need that in there, although it helps. Double meters per inch. Meters per inch. And that one is 0 0.0254. There we go. Something that you haven't seen yet are those finals. Now we're going to compute body mass index. Double weight in kilograms is weight times, and this should automatically start, and it doesn't. That's awesome. Copy this, paste that. Kilograms per pound. Why did the weight not, oh. I before E except after C. Wait. Wait. W E I G H T. I before E except after C. Wait. I guess that's one of the exceptions. W E I G H T. Height and weight. H E I G H T in meters equals H E I G H T uh, times well wow, times meters per inch double 
BMI, and yes, they have it lowercase. W A H G O T in kilograms divided by. Oops, I got a times in there somehow. Divided by H E I G H T in meters times H E I G H T in. Oh my gosh. What is up with my typing tonight? Seriously. All right. Uh, wait meters. We're just going to copy, paste, copy, paste. There we go. And that's not a function. That's an int, uh, a variable. There we go. So that does the computation for us. Display the results. System.out.print ln quote, BMI is, in quote, plus BMI, system, sorry, if BMI is less than 18.5, then system dot out dot print ln, uh, quote, under weight, we're going to do that again. This one's going to be an else if BMI is less than 25. Is that a double tab? I did do it a double tab. No double tabs. System, I'm just going to copy the line because we like to copy. Underweight, normal. And because we have an if else uh, under 30, or less than 30, then it's overweight. And last one. Oh, wait, that was the last one, wasn't it? No. 18.5, 25, 30. Oh, and then it's just an else statement. So if it's anything else, then you are obese. Obese. I'm going to kind of be embarrassed to actually test this one out. Run it. Enter your weight in pounds. One, no, 230. Enter your height in inches. 74. What? Um, my calculations might be wrong. I'm not overweight. I'm perfectly plump. Those are the correct calculations. If we test it again, control F, yep. Uh, if I am 180 pounds and I'm 74 inches tall, that is the normal range. So I have to get down to 180 pounds before I am normal. I am never going to be 180 pounds. It's not going to happen. So, yeah, let's do it again. If I were 172 pounds and 74 inches, should be unknown. All right, run it again. If I'm 160 pounds, 74 inches, what? Okay, let's do the extreme. 90 pounds, 74 inches tall. Underweight, there we go, got it. So, uh, yeah, that was listing 3.5, compute and interpret BMI. Uh, there's a case study for computing taxes. Listing 3.6, oh my gosh, how many more listings do we have? We have one, two, mm -hmm. three. Three, four, five, Six. 
six. There we go. Okay, we have six more listings to do. Wow. Can we do six more listings? How many have we done? One, two, three, four. We've done six, got six more to go. I don't know that I've got that much time. Yeah, these these look fairly simple. Okay, yeah, let's do these. Let's do them. Compute and interpret BMI was our last one. All right, it's going to be listing 3.6, Compute Tax Java. And yeah, let's get started. New class. Compute Tax. Import. Java.util.scanner. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing there? Public static void main string args. All right, here we go. Create scanner. First part is going to be scanner equal, oh, scanner, scanner input equals new scanner system dot in. Go to the end. Good. Prompt the user to enter filing status. Ooh. Filing status. <laughs> I put a semicolon at the end of a comment. Funny. All right. System dot out dot print. Man, come on. All right. In quotes, we're going to put in parentheses zero single filer one married jointly or qualifying widow widower widow widower comma and slash in now they put a plus on there that's because it ran off the end we're doing a slash in to do a new line two dash married separately three head of household slash in enter the filing status in quote in a space uh, we need that at the end int status equals input dot next int uh, by the way we are not uh, value checking these so they could put in 1.3 and crash the system uh, prompt the user to wow to enter taxable income I did it again with the semicolon system dot out dot print enter taxable income in quote Put a space after it. That way it gives us some room for them to type. Int. Oh, sorry. Double. Because it could have a floating point on it. Uh, income equals input dot next double. It's kind of cool that it automatically selected double for me. Because it knew that we were, our variable was a double. Compute tax. Tax A. Compute, compute. Double tax equals zero. 
if status is equal to zero. Oh, that's what they're doing. They're showing you a whole bunch of if then statements. And we get to start to use the brackets. If the status is equal to zero, and they did weirdness out here, because the first one's in a bracket and the second one's not, I'm going to put brackets in just to make it more clear on my screen. Uh, if income is greater than or equal to 8350, then tax equals income times 0 0.10 and n. Else if We have to have our values in there. Uh, income is greater than or equal to 33950, then tax is going to be times income, or income times, ooh, I missed it. Tax equals 8350, hold on. Three three nine five zero three three nine five zero. All right, line twenty six eight three five zero times zero point one zero times. Wow. So the tax equals eight three five zero times times zero point one zero plus income minus 8350 times 0 0.15. You have to make sure you have to you have those leading zeros in there. Else if income is less than or equal to skills in there. Uh, let me check on something real quick. Okay, good. I was going to be so sad if that thing was not recording that entire time. <laughs> Whoa. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Come here, you. All right. Uh, we are on line 28, line 28, good. If it's greater or less than or equal to 82250, then tax is equal to, oh gosh, forgot to move this over there. Tax is equal to uh, 8350 times, it looks like this first part again. So it's this exact same thing, times income minus something. Oh, no, just this first part. 82250, 33950 minus 8350 times 0.15 like that. Else if income is less than or equal to 17, 15, 50, then, and again, give me my spaces. Give me my white space. Tax equals 8350 times 0 0.10 plus 33950 minus 8350 times 0. Point, oops, times 0. 0.15 plus 82250 minus 33950 times times 0. 
to 5 plus, hold on, did I miss something there? I did not. The first one's income minus 8350. The second one is 33950 minus 8350. So this is just starting to repeat the same process. Okay, times 0.25 plus income minus 82250 times 0 0.28. So that's for the 171550. Good. And the last one. Uh, nope, we got one more. Else if income is greater than or equal to uh, 1750 is our last one, 372950. Then I should really should just leave the brackets where they land. Tax, tax equals, let's see if it's the exact same thing. It is the exact same statement up until times 0.25. Times 0.25 is a little bit different. So we're just going to copy that entire line. Times 0.25. And then it goes 171550 minus 8250 times 0.28. And then plus... 372950 minus 1750 50, 1550 times 0 0.33. And that should wrap up the if elf elf if if elf if, 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 if the nested if statements. Let's see which one does that belong to? That one goes to that same one. All right, so bracket, 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 bracket. So this bracket must go to that bracket. Okay, so see where the ending bracket gets highlighted with this little gray box? I can tell by clicking here, little gray box here, that is my ending one. So I'll line that back up. And, oh, oh, we're not done. Oh, gosh. Hold on. we got to send text our runtime here. Oh, no, we don't. Okay. We have one last else statement. Else. So if all else fails, then we're going to run the same statement, except the last one, where we said income... We didn't say income minus. What, are we, what am I doing? What am I doing? Seriously? This is going to be income minus 17, 15, 50 times 0.33. There we go. Times 33 plus... Income minus three seven two nine five zero times. So remember your order of precedence with the uh, multiplications and additions. This is where they get confusing. You got to keep those in mind. Multiplication is going to be happening first, um, outside of the things that are inside the brackets. So the brackets are going to be calculated, and then they're going to be times, and then everything else is going to be added together. That's how you get your text at the very end. Times 0 0.035. Good. Put a tab on that. Good. All right, and that was if our status was equal to zero, right? So now, uh, 
if status equal one, if status equal two, if status equal three. Thank goodness they left them as uh, exercises. They actually commented those out. Uh, else if status equals one. Uh, if your professor is making you do this part, <laughs> good luck. Left as exercise. Uh, if status is equal to one, two, or three, and then I get a last one in here. Else system dot out dot print ln error invalid status and there's no period on that system dot exit one. All right, so what that means, system.exit, all right, we're going to return the value of 1. Why do you want to return the value of 1? Because we did not exit clearly. Um, if you've ever seen them before where we do a function and you return 0, that means there was no error. If you return uh, a 1 or something else out of a program, most likely you're exiting with an error code of some kind. Uh, that's how Windows keeps its logs. So same thing we're doing here. There was an error. We're exiting with a 1. Yes, there was an error. True. And then the la very last part. Display the result. System dot out, oops, dot out dot print ln. Tax is plus int. We have to cast it. Tax times times times. 100. That was my timer going off. All right, I'm going to have to finish this one up. 100.0. There we go. Save that. Run that. Come on. Oh, there's errors. Yeah, proceed. Where was my error? Uh, unresolved compilation problem token. What? Where's the error? It's under main tax times int. Those are good. That one's good at the end. Line 37. Oh, here we go. Ah, oh, got an extra one hanging out there. Did I copy that down? I didn't copy that, did I? Okay, that should work. Try that. All right. Sync filer. Zero. Oops. Make sure you click in your console window. Zero. Enter taxable income 10,000. Uh, let's see if it gives some examples in the book of what to enter. All right, zero and 400,000. So let's run this again. Zero, 400,000. Should give us 117683. 0.5, perfect. Run it again, they do have a second. No, they do not. They don't have any other things. Uh, oh, they go on to show system.exit status on line 53. Uh, the next part they get into for listing logical operators are the exclamation mark, the and, and, the or, or, and what is that? Oh, caret. Shift six is a caret. So, <laughs> let's see how bad the next one is. Lines... Line, 22 lines. Okay. I'm going to do a trick. I'm going to take this whole thing, copy it. Right click, new class. This is going to be test boolean 
operators. We're going to take out that last one. We're going to take out everything on the inside here. Put this to the outside. And clean that up a little bit. Nice. That way I don't have to type all that stuff over again. Oh, I don't do the spaces there. There we go. Cool. So we got the first part done. Uh, scanner input equals new scanner system dot in. Uh, oh, they've got comments. Should we comment? Oh, we don't need to comment. Uh, create a scanner. Receive the input. System dot out dot print. Uh, enter an integer. They have a space in it. Make sure you put a space in yours uh, at the end of the quote. Int number equals input dot next int. And then we do if number modulus 2 is equal to 0 and double ampersands number modulus 3 is equal to 0, then system.out.print print ln number Oops, there's no quotes on that one. They actually want the number plus quote space is divisible by two and three. Uh, put a period and semicolon at the end. And basically you're going to do the same thing. So copy, paste, paste, paste. And we're just going to change the logic in the operators. Modulus zero, modulus, uh, sorry, modulus two, modulus two, zero, zero. Same, same. Or modulus three modulus three and not oh I see what they did there um, divisible by two or three. Uh, two or three, comma, but not both. There we go. That's a simple listing. Run that one. Uh, they give us the test inputs for four. So four, enter, divisible by two or three is divisible by two or three, but not both. Run it again. They say 18, we'll put 18. Outputs are two and three, two or three, which are returning true. Okay, that's it for that listing. Very nice, done. Uh, goes into a case study determining leap years, uh, leap year Java. All right, basically we're just gonna do the same thing that we did last time, copy this whole thing over. Right click, new class, call it leap year, paste. Now see what I did there? I actually went over the whole thing, leap year. I'm just gonna change that. Take this innards out. Actually, does it use, yeah, it uses input, so. Look at that, speed scripting. Enter a year. Enters the next int. Check if the year is a, uh, a leap year. Boolean is leap year equals, here's where they get into some funky stuff. So, 
if year modulus 4 is equal to 0 and year modulus 100 is not equal to 0 or and then in brackets not in brackets in parentheses oh, 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 oh hold on there we go fours on the outside of the brackets another set of brackets parentheses year modulus 400 is equal to zero sweet that should be good right system dot out dot print ln year plus is a leap year question mark space plus is leap year we could do an if then statement right there but it's easier just to spit out true or false save it run it oh we got an error what do we have a year a year year oh year forgot to initialize that there we go done enter a year 1991 that was not a leap year run it again let's try 2012 yes run it again so four five six 2016 yes we are in a leap year very good 3.8 uh, they go on to do a case study uh, there is a lottery 3.9 let's continue on to 3.9 new class lottery paste the whole thing again like we did last time change the name lottery uh, take out let's see <laughs> okay it's not the same kind it doesn't it launch or in no 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 do we actually make a guess in here there we go lines 24 through 32 are actual guesses where we actually do an input all right so take out the innards We'll leave the scanner dot input there. I'm sure they're gonna ask for it. Yep, they do. Okay. Mm, it made some good. Static void main generate lottery numbers. Let's actually do this in the listing in order. Generate a lottery number and then int lottery equals int math dot random times 100 prompt oops prompt prompt the user for uh, prompt the user to enter a number to enter a guess and that's where they create the scanner so there we go system dot out dot print by the way if I am moving too fast you can pause this at any time I know it's long stick with me lottery pick two digits put a space after it int guess equals input dot next int get digits from lottery int lottery digit one equals lottery divided by ten int lottery digit two equals lottery modulus ten all right, do you see what they did there? Divided by 10 is going to give you 
two, like, uh, say the number's 27. So if you divided 27 by 10, it's going to be 2.7. But because we're using an integer right here, an int, it's only going to return 2. So you're going to get the first digit. Uh, the second part is modulus 10. So what is 27 divided by 10? It's uh, 0.27 with the remaining, no, yeah, 27 divided by 10 is uh, 2.7, but it's only going to return the m remainder. So it's the first digit of the remainder, which is 7. So the second digit is going to be 7, or whatever we put in. That's how that logic is working, because it's an integer. Doesn't return floating points. Ooh, they do the same thing with the guess, too. Get digits from guess. And I'm guessing we can just basically do this. Change this to guess. And I'm just going to copy that. Copy, paste, paste, and then highlight that and paste. Is that what they did? That's what they did. All right. So then we go into check the guess. If guess is equal to lottery, then system dot out dot print line exact match colon you win ten thousand dollars man how old is this book just kidding else if guess digit two is equal to lottery digit one and double ampersand guess digit one is equal to lottery digit two so they reversed them. So like if I put in 21 and the number was 12, then this is a match. Then system.out.print ln. Whoa, what happened there? Just not, okay. Nope, we're good. Match all digits. You win $3,000. By the way, I never knew how complicated a comma is to get into digits, but I'll let you discover that later. Um, okay, that was our second logic. Uh, else if, and here comes some logic work, so I'm actually going to enter this down a little bit so you can see guess digit 1 is equal to lottery digit 1. And I don't like how they put the ors at the next. Or guess digit 2 is equal to lottery digit 1. Or, so, oh, sorry. They do the guesses first. 1, and the lottery is second. 1 and 2, 1 and 2. Basically, we're going to do the same match, only with the 2s. 2 and 2, 1 to 2. And there's no logical or on the last one. So like that. One, two, three, four. If any of those are true, system.out.println match one digit, you win a thousand dollars. Don't forget your end quote. That was for me, not for you. I forgot. Don't forget. Else. System dot out dot print ln. Sorry, no match. Wow. <laughs> In comparison to the uh, the subtraction math 
quiz that we did for the little kid, they're a lot nicer to the gamblers in this book than they are to the, you know, kid trying to do his math homework. <laughs> Wrong. And then, oh, sorry, no match. <laughs> sorry, Catalan. All right, let's match the two digits. 12. Sorry, no match. Do it again. 13. Sorry, no match. 22? 25. Man, that's a horrible game. Oh, we forgot to say uh, what the lottery number was, didn't we? All right, so in between the guesses, uh, before the check guess, but after we got the first and second digit, System dot out dot print ln the lottery number is plus lottery. There we go. Save that. Run that. Twenty two. Twenty five. Oh, I got a digit. Yay. One a thousand. Um, 19. Ooh, I got a digit. It was 14. Thirty-seven. Ooh, I got a digit. A thousand. So that's it for listing three dot uh three nine lottery dot java. And I am going to call it a night. Because it is late and the next listing. Chinese Zodiac. Oh, come on. It's so easy. Okay. The next listing is using cases, which make if-else statements so much easier. The problem is it has to be a number. You can't do... Well, you might be able to do... Never mind. So, let's go ahead and do a new one. New class. It's going to be Chinese Zodiacs. Zodiac. Singular. Oh, darn it. All right. Import java.util.scanner. Public static void main string. It just makes you better at it. Just type it out. You, you know I'm doing it with you. Uh, args. I know you guys were complaining about it. All right. Uh, scanner input equals new scanner system dot in uh, system dot out dot print enter a year int year equals input yeah input dot next int now here comes the cool part. Switch year modulus 12. So what is switch? Um, basically, you're going to use switch to do a bunch of cases, like case 0, case 1, case 2, case 3. Whatever the result of this switch is, that's what we'll pick in the case down below. Um, also be sure to use your breaks, because if you do not break out of your case, then you'll get what's called fall through. Like this is a true statement, and then you go down to this is true, and th this is true. So you could use that with like a bit field checker, um, where you have multiple cases. And we're not doing it in this case. We're just going to go on down the line. So the first one's going to be case, oops, lowercase, case zero. Why does it do that? Let's do this. Let's just for giggles leave it up there. Case zero. No, it didn't do it. Tab that in. System dot out dot print ln monkey. And break. I like how they did that all on one line. So copy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Technically, it's the twelfth month because we started at zero. And we, ooh, what was that? From monkey, we go to rooster. From rooster, we go to dog. To pig. To rat. Ox. Tiger. Rabbit. Dragon. Snake, horse, sheep. All right, so really quick breakdown. I mean, you can you can see what this thing is doing. It's going to print it out each time. Now, instead of having to type out system every single time, what we could have done is this um, string blah equals blah. Did that work? That didn't work. Why did that one not work? String. Can we make a lower string? STR. Oh, we can't do strings like that. Can we int them? Oh, we can't do that. It's because strings are weird with Java. But what we could do is just instead of printing out like this each time, we could put in um, variable equals monkey, variable equals this, and then do system dot out to print one time at the bottom to spit out whatever our variable was. So you don't have to type this out like a billion times. All right, let's test it. Oh oh, uh oh. Select resource. Oh, we just needed to save it. Uh, year eleven, monkey. Why did that work? Oh, year, uh, 1993 was the rooster. Uh, 2016 was the monkey. Uh, for our listing, it says 1963, which should be a rabbit. 1963, rabbit. There you have it. All right. I know I said that was the last list listing. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 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 All right. It goes on to formatting console output. So double the amount, interest amount, stuff like that. Um, it also shows you how to do uh, parentheses B's for booleans, and it actually uses the parentheses E's for uh, numbers and sci scientific notations. System dot out dot print F. Come on, does it have a listing for it? It has comparisons. Ooh, confirmation dialog boxes. J option pins. So yes, let's keep going with this. Uh, guess birthday confirmation dialog. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm digging it. So, okay, we're going to go ahead and do a new class, and this is going to be the guess birthday using confirmation dialog. All right, go back over to the birthday guessing game, and we're basically going to copy out that same set that we had. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Go back and copy those because you're going to want them. All right, guest birthday with confirmation dialog box. Starting up at the very top, we're going to have import Java X swing J option pane. So what is Java X swing J option pane? Um, this is GUI. This is graphical user interfacing. Um, it gives you the ability to create windows and dialog boxes and um, buttons. 
text boxes, labels. So it'll actually give you graphical user interfaces. The public static void main, uh, we have to put that in, public static void main, string capital, array, args. All right, and it has a set them, set one, two, three, four, five. Like I said, just copy and paste it from the first one so we can get down to the nitty gritty good stuff. And it looks like it has the same thing. So int day equals zero. All right, here's where the cool stuff starts to happen. Prompt the user to answer questions. Int answer equals j option pane dot show confirmation dialog for a parent we're going to be null the message is is your birthday in these numbers question mark slash in plus set one So basically it's doing the exact same thing as before, but we're actually using it with dialog boxes. If answer equals J option pain dot yes underscore option, then day plus equals one. All right, see what we're doing there? Ooh, why is that? Oh, double equals. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing for sets two, three, four, five, uh, and increment them by one, two, four, eight, and 16. In the final one, we're gonna show message dialog box, not a confirmation box, uh, and set it to null for a parent. Uh, your birthday is So, copy, oops, paste, oops, paste, uh, come on, paste, 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 one, two, three, four, uh, last one's going to be 16, and this is set five, set four, and this was Eight. Four. Two. Three. Two. And I think that was the last one. Perfect. Don't need to initialize because we already have our answer. Don't need to initialize. Don't need to initialize. Oops, we do need an A on there. Don't need to initialize. All right, and that should give us the uh, everything that we need except for the very last thing, which is to display J option pane dot, oops, wow, pane dot show show message dialog null for the parent your birthday is plus day plus exclamation mark perfect run it here we go is your birthday in these sets of numbers this is the first time that you guys have gotten to see uh, a dialog box. Yes! Chapter 3, go. Uh, and I'm going to say no, because mine's on the 8th. No. No. Oh, there it is. Yes. And no. Your birthday is the 8th. Nice. Uh, let's go for the 27th. Uh, yes, there's a 27 in there. Yes, there's a 27 in there. 
No 27 on that one. Yes, the 27 on there. Yes, there's a 27 in there. The number is the 27th. So if you know binary, that's basically what it's doing. Um, each one of the sets, um, if the number and the binary are the... N never mind. It's been a long night. But there's the dialog boxes. Uh, okay, it goes on to 3.19, which explains about debugging. And finally, it goes into the chapter summary, test questions, and yeah, and then it gives you some listings to try on your own. Thank you guys for sticking with me for that long. That was a that was a long, long thing. Well worth it for the very end to see that dialog box pop up for the first time, start seeing some interfacing and some GUIs. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this chapter. This has been Chapter 3 of the Introduction to Java Programming, 9th edition, Daniel Ling. Ling, Ling. Uh, I will post the ISBN numbers uh, and the actual pictures of the books, uh, everything that you need to know. So thank you, everybody. Have a good night.